Are you over the age of 25 and need to lose more than 30 pounds? If so, the next 30 seconds are crucial to your well-being because Sensa is sending 30-day free trials to anyone looking to lose the max amount of weight. To experience the most dramatic weight loss results, you must want to lose over 30 pounds. Call 1-800-964-5392 now. Due to overwhelming demand, there is a strict limit of one free trial per household. 1-800-964-5392. 1-800-964-5392. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to In Spirit Communications Talk Radio, where your voice is heard. I'm your host, Danella Martin Braddock. Good afternoon, good evening, um, good morning, uh, depending on where you are. Hi, um, I am Danella Martin Braddix. I'm your host for In Spirit Talk Radio. And um, we've got our panel who is here hanging out with us. We're going to introduce them shortly. And uh, we're going to take this time right now to just jump right into our topic, um, which is black women, women of color, and trauma. Um and talk about the impact of trauma in our lives. Um, I wanted to just mention, first of all, um, there was a project called Rise, Sister, Rise. This was a project, a groundbreaking study that occurred in um, several cities in Ohio. And what it did was it uh, conducted studies of the lives of young black girls, young black women um, age, uh, who attended middle school and high school. Now, what's so groundbreaking about this this study is that you've had quite a few studies of, you know, the effects of, you know, uh, urban blight, you know, on young black men, you know, violence in the lives of black men, you know, all the other you know, isms that they, um, you know, project onto young black boys and young black men and how it affects them. There's been a lot of research as of late in the past 20 years or so um, even, you know, educational studies, you know, how do, you know, black boys learn and this and that. Not really enough research been done, but, but some. Um, but there's been very little research done in the way of black girls, black women, and how their um, struggles, you know, how issues contribute to the choices that they make in their lives, which, you know, contribute to the urban blight, you know, which we see, you know, today, which has manifested today. So the Rise is to Rise project, it focused on young black, you know, women. And it talked about the experience of trauma in the lives of young black women and how it affected them. Um, and we're going to just talk a little bit about trauma for a minute, you know, and uh, ask ourselves, what is trauma? You know, what is traumatic? And the findings were that, you know, there are so many, you know, instances of trauma that occur in the lives of a lot of urban, you know, black girls, that um, it's, not, it's not only is it not recognized, you know, by society, but even the girls themselves don't really recognize it as abnormal. It's kind of gotten used to a large proportion of us, too large, has gotten used to living with a, with a lot of things that, you know, we really shouldn't. And when we're talking about trauma, we're talking about, you know, um, Basically, we're talking about violence, um, you know, violence in the schools, violence in the communities. The findings was that if a person uh, witnessed violence, that that was just as traumatic as, you know, being a participant in the violence uh, activity. Um, we're talking about um, a lot of isolation. Um, a lot of girls experienced that. We'll get into the numbers later, but experienced being home alone for more than two hours or more outside of school. So, um, you know, they're not getting the nurturing and the rearing, you know, that is, that's still necessary for young people. Um, a lot, a large proportion has experienced physical abuse, you know, by someone, you know, living in their household. Including hitting, kicking, punching, um, you know, um, they uh, a large group has uh, reported experiencing emotional abuse, um, you know, divorced parents or, you know, divorced step-parents or, you know, uh, domestic violence. Um, up to 30% have reported having a battered mother. 
28% report having an incarcerated family member, 22% um, report having a substance-addicted family member, um, you know, um, a large proportion, a 9% reported having experienced sexual abuse, 7 reported having experienced physical neglect. Now, all of those out there who are skeptical of statistics, um, granted, these studies were made in uh, the cities of Lima and um, Columbus and um, in this city. Um, I can't remember the name right now. But these cities were specifically chosen because they did have a high proportion of um, students who were, you know, for example, getting a free school lunch or, you know, a high rate of, you know, uh, dropout, you know, a truancy and things like that. So we're not talking about, you know, the, the middle class, you know, areas. We are talking about the areas that are affected by, you know, what we would call urban, you know, urban blight. So anyway, so we're, you know, we're not talking about perhaps, um, you know, the, the what we would call the middle class, but it is a huge proportion of our girls that are living in these circumstances. Let me stop. I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to stop babbling for a minute. Uh, let me uh, give a chance uh, to uh, let me introduce the um, panel that we have tonight, and um, we're going to get into some questions. I'm going to throw this question out to the panel beforehand, what I kind of want you to touch on at first, if you don't mind. What I want to ask you, <laughs> what I want to ask you basically is, do you think um, a, a project, you know, a research project such as Rise Sister Rise is even necessary? Um, and what do you think about this crisis that this generation of black girls is facing? And when I say black, I'm saying, you know, girls of color and even, you know, white girls. You know, unfortunately, it's becoming less of a color thing, more of a class thing. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to say, you know, girls, black girls, uh, girls of color. What do you think about the crisis that this uh, next generation of girls is facing? And do you even think it's a crisis? Um, let me introduce you the panel. Introduce to you the panel for tonight's program. We've got Leslie Ann Brown, writer and founder of Bandit Queen Press, out of Copenhagen, Denmark. And um, I just love her so much because it's five in the morning there, and she's <laughs> up and ready to go. Woo! Hey. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, we love you. <laughs> Yay, love thank you. you. I'm loving the love. <laughs> <laughs> You're a trooper girl. Oh, thank you. And we've got uh, Michael Harper, uh, activist and entrepreneur in Brooklyn, New York. What's up, family? How y'all doing? Hey, bye. Why do I feel like going Brooklyn every time you say right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Brooklyn. Music next week. <laughs> yeah, you know wherever Brooklyn, wherever you at, Brooklyn is always in the house. Okay, always you know, on the map. Well, you know, I read that they said um, um, one out of every eight Americans has a tie to Brooklyn, like a relative of they or they've lived there or something. So, Interesting. yeah. So I think that just means that Brooklyn is basically the world. What's up? Hello. That's so funny. It's all about Brooklyn. And <laughs> Then we've got um, Tawana Barnes, a uh, glamour girl, law student, who also I've got to give some love to because she's in the middle of finals, and she is taking the time out from her studies to hang out with with us. What's up, girl? Hey, what's up? Yay. Hey. <laughs> Everyone's trooping. <laughs> right? <laughs> Basically, well that's how you got to do it. So I'm going to ask first lab, Leslie Ann Brown, I just want to know, um, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I was really um, <clears throat> moved by the uh, study. I really um, w I felt very um, relieved that people were talking openly about the issues that were addressed from the study. Um, I'm not, I'm very, I am very skeptical when it comes to studies, but I also have sort of a um, natural tendency to uh, re react positively to them when they confirm what I feel that I know already intuitively or from what I've experienced. Yeah. 